Welcome to CSL Saturday between University of New Mexico and the Colorado School of Mines. I am Menasor, a gold level Zerg player from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Today we will have matches between Trumpet and Peeve, Barhazad and Exultant, and then a 2v2 between Cat Whale, Dr. Ted, and Wooterface and BDM. And then we're going to end it off with Solar JTO versus Toxic Twinkle. Um, these are higher level players from gold to masters. And really with the MMR decay and such, um, some players have been demoted in ways that don't show their true ability. So let's just go ahead and jump right in to doing these. This is just going to be like a replay casting. Pretty stoked on it. So let's go ahead and jump into our first game, which will be between Trumpet and Piev. First map is Akalon Waste, a map that has just been taken out of the current ladder pool. And in the bottom right hand corner, we have that red Protoss, the man that will sound. His name is Trumpet. And then in the top left hand corner, we have the purple Protoss. His name is Piev. Uh, PvP, a matchup that usually involves Stalkers and Immortals, if it gets a little bit later. Whoever expands first dies. And we'll definitely see where these players are going to go. Trumpet, a the MVP of UNM CSL. He's known to pull himself out of the stickiest of situations. Understanding best reading his opponents under pressure. We're gonna have that nine pylon scout coming from Piev. So excited. He's gonna probably see a standard. Uh, single gas into gateway cyber opening. That's usually standard for what Trumpet does. Or what I've seen him do. He does a DT expand in PvP, I know that. I don't know if he's going to do it in this match. And as of late, I haven't really seen too much of Trumpet. The last show match that UNM CSL has had uh, that's outside of the CSL team uh, proper. Oh, looking for that two-gate proxy is Trumpet. Gateway, and we're seeing double gas from Trumpet. Let's see what kind of tech he wants to go. Searching for that two, that two gateway proxy. Or some type of proxy in his base. Our purple Protoss is moving to do what? Trickery? But Trumpet's on top of it. He's looking. Oh, he took a gas steal. We see our purple Colorado uh, University of Mines taking, stealing that second gas. And we're seeing the double gas come out from our purple Protoss. And about to put down that Cybercore. Yes, sir. Trumpet's giving a little bit of a scout. Gonna see basically everything he needs to see. He's gonna see that gas, gonna try to see what kind of early tech that's going into, if it's gonna be a proxy. And we do have this probe right here in the third, optional third location of Trumpet. We are seeing a forward pylon coming down. And Trumpet will slowly slowly destroy this pesky assimilator because we all hate it when we can't get our gas well I'm I'm Zerg so it doesn't really matter to me early, this early in the game most of the time all I need is one gas and we are gonna see that proxy Stargate from our purple Protoss player from Colorado State I mean Colorado University of Mines maybe see a proxy probably see a proxy Oracle will will Trumpet be ready for this He's opting to expand. Another forward pylon from our purple Protoss. And Trumpet is definitely in the dark on this proxy. He doesn't know what's going on, but he's sending his probe and he's definitely going to see that there's going to be oh, quite a few, two missing pylons at this time in the game. Will he be ready for it is the question. Will he be ready to, to thwart away this oracle? 
That Stalker's a little bit out of position right now, and that Oracle's about to pop. Mothership Core is out. And here comes that Oracle right into the main mineral line of Trumpet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six probes down, and the Stalker will be able to not throw it away. But the energy's gone. Seven probes, one Stalker. But Trumpet does have a natural up, and he just really needs to get out some more Stalkers. Thwart it away, and just macro behind this, but we are seeing... There's three gates, co three gates coming down from uh, our purple Protoss. We do have the Mothership Core in right now, and a second Oracle coming in. This could be really devastating for Trumpet. Trumpet needs more Stalkers. And the Stalker's gonna go down, and we're gonna see a lot more probes getting roasted by those Photon Beams. Oh, 13 probes so far. Nexus Cannon coming down, throwing the Mothership Core away. Gonna probably lose that Mothership Core. The Probe Process has lost his Mothership Core. The two Oracles are just camping out by the natural expansion of, tr of Trumpet. We are seeing a worker lead, 27 probes to 17. Trumpet losing 13, 14 probes. And... One Stalker? Two Stalkers. Trumpet in a bit of a deficit right now. Needs to get more Stalkers. Two Stalkers or so to stop this. But uh, we do have an Expand from our Purple Protoss player. And he just now has his Warp Gate. The thing is, is he going to put in some Zealots at this forward pylon or, or some Stalkers and move forward into the natural of Trumpet? Trumpet really doesn't have anything right now. He's just trying to get his, his money back up, opting not to get too much. Well, now getting more gas, but... Oh, and then those Oracles are recharged. They're going to come in for the kill. I don't think Trumpet can really do anything right now. Oh. Losing quite a few more probes. Two Stalkers gonna try to throw it away but I think it's too much too much economic loss already we have 19 supply to 40 supply another mothership core is making its way across the map toward trumpet and we have a void ray, void ray out right now I think this is gonna be just a yeah there's warp ins at this forward pylon he's gonna try to finish it off right now and he just might be able to. Trumpet's really crippled right now. His income is way low. Supplies are telling the story right now. 23 to 52 supply in favor of our purple Protoss. And uncontested coming up that rap. We're going to probably see the GG here in just a moment. We have Nexus Cannon initiated. Our purple Protoss will just take out this natural expansion of Trumpet while Trumpet tries to hold. And there is a Void Ray trying to poke some damage, but it will be destroyed. Oh, we do see a Zealot Harass coming from Trumpet with this uh, awesome proxy pylon. Only killing seven workers, though. Not, not a legitimate enough to really slow him down. Worker 25 to 16 right now. He's gonna try, Trumpet's gonna try to hold this with all his might, but he just doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough for another Nexus Cannon. And, G and Trumpet GG's and uh, Colorado University of Mines has won game one. Now we're going to jump into game two between Barazad and Exultan. Doo -doo. And this is game two on Derelict Watcher. Derelict Watcher also being kicked out of the map pool this season. And in the top right hand corner, we have that red Terran. His name is Barazad. In the bottom left hand corner, we have that blue Protoss. His name is Zixultan. Um, Barazad's plays is a he's a macro Terran player. 
he mostly opts for, especially against Protoss, he'll, he will get that Reaper and move into some type of just straight bio and just macro up and just see if he can just end it against a Protoss. Uh, very good Ghost Control, very good Viking Control if there is Colossus. He is currently, I think, 0-1 in his show match history when UNM CSL goes against um, other opposing teams in a best of seven team show mat team series show match. He's lost once, and I think it was against um, a Chicago Illinois team out of Ignite Gaming Lounge. And the last one he actually won against, I think it was George Washington University, or was it Penn State? He won against another Mecking Terran. He's really good at TVT. And this is a TVP. We have that nine pylon scout. And Varzar being smart here is keeping his buildings off the side so much. Just so if there's a Blink Stalker shenanigans, he doesn't have to worry about a Mothership core giving the Stalkers high ground vision and sniping buildings. That can be very annoying in uh, a Death Kiss, if you know what I'm saying. Gateway first, no, no gas yet. We'll see what he opts to do in just a few moments, seeing what his gas timing is or if he's... Actually, is he saving money for a Nexus? No, he's spending. No, he's getting his first gas right now. So, normal cyber core. Um, looks like a warp gate opening, but it could be an expand. First barracks coming down, and we do have this pesky probe coming around. Is he gonna build something? No, he's gonna wait behind this uh, optional third area and maybe put down a forward pylon for uh, a proxy oracle or something of the sort. We'd have to see another gas fairly soon for that, I would say. Let's see if we get that gas. Will he take that second gas? Yes, here comes that second gas. We will probably see Stargate. Proxy Stargate, which is super powerful against a Terran that doesn't really know. And actually, right now, Barhazad is looking around for um, such a thing. And do we see where that was rallied? No, we don't. It's just moving around. And Barhazard's first marine is going to actually come around to that general area, so you probably catch him off guard. Probably, uh, will probably... Barhazard will catch Exultant. His a... Oh, here comes the Reaper. The Reaper's going to look. Reaper's going to look. And there goes that forward pylon, and the Reaper scouts it. Barhazard has foiled Exultant's plans. And we'll see this be cancelled. And Barhazard coming in for the... Well, well, Mothership Core is on its way. That SCV will probably die. However, it's going to count two pylons and see that that third one was the one that he found. So he'll be able to just stop that right now. We have the Natural Command Center came down for Barazon as well as a Bunker for defense. I mean, really right now, um, Barazon is in a great position. He is stopping. Uh, here comes the Stalker. Oh, the Stalker won't kill it. Oh, he's and gonna NG Babel or supply supply block or put a supply depot to block that expand. So really, Barazan is in a great position right now. He has scouted his opponent. He sees what's happening. It's a thwarted Stargate, but now the Stargate has to be made in his base, which is gonna delay that timing, making it a lot better for Barazan in order to have time to defend. And this Ford pylon will go down just shortly. Uh, and Barazan returning with this SCV. So all in all, um, great play from. Barazad calling out what the the meta that Protoss likes to do to very nice Terran players. And dropping two more gates for defense. And we're seeing a one zealot, one stalker, mother core pressure. And this Reaper is going to come in and not see and expand. And I think he'll be ready for it. I definitely think he'll be ready for it. We do have a widow mine coming into the um, the the mineral line, the main mineral line. So he will be ready for it. If it does decide to come, and where does it go? Yeah, there it goes. And Barzad is, is reading this so well, he didn't see an expansion, he knows that there's going to be this pressure. Or possibly, yeah, definitely, yeah, an all-in all in type pressure right here. Stalker moving up the front, gonna definitely see those bunkers, and we have in the back, this Oracle is gonna come in, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen, oh, the, the, the Widowmine wasn't burrowed, oh my gosh, the Widowmine wasn't burrowed in the back, and that 
Oracle is doing some work back there. We have four dead workers. And the front is definitely defended, but... That's five. Seven. Oh, and getting hit by that Widow Mine. And... Uh, seven killed? Seven workers killed? So... Not too shabby, but he hasn't expanded, and this is definitely an all-in from our friend Exalt. And, and really, Barzan has this on lock. He has three bunkers in the front, going to fill those other ones up and not really have to worry about it. He's real clutch with pulling his SCVs, in which I've seen in the past. And here comes a, a second Oracle, but really, Barzan is ready with his Widow Mines. There's really no way that this is going to work out for Exalt. Yep, Exultant just pulling back and finally takes his natural, knowing that he really can't afford to do this. Another two racks coming down from Barzad, getting just getting his macro in place, and just probably going to do a, 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 a bio timing after this. After he gets a few medevacs, he's just going to probably do a timing and just roll right in. And honestly, he's in a position to do so. Uh, this army is somewhat fragile. No upgrades. Are there upgrades going for our friend Barhazad? Not yet. However, he just has a... W oh, but here comes that engineering bay. And just a way better advantage right now. I mean, he can just turtle and be on two base. And really, when it comes down to it, this is not really going to work out for Exultant. Does take out that Widow Mine and is ready for this push. And here it comes. No, the engage. Are you going to do it? Yeah. And here's the engage, three bunkers against some gateway units. All SCVs are being pulled, yes, and Barzad is holding this beautifully. There's really nothing out here to stop it. And where are those... Uh, he lost those... He, he, did he lose the other one to anything? Nope. And the oracles weren't able to do anything, and this is awesome. Barzad, just 70, 70 supply to 39. Let's check that worker lead. 21 to 40. Exultant is not in a good position right now. He is starting pro production at his at his natural. His main, oh, is uh, undersaturated just by a bit. And we're seeing a robotics facility put down looking to transition into Colossus because he does see that Barzad is going to be going bio. But there really isn't that much stuff out here. And we do have that plus one attack coming from Barzad. If he, if, if he gets a few medevacs out, he will be able to, to crush this and then just move into the main base of uh, the natural and then main base of Exultant. And again, Barzad is with the University of New Mexico. Exalton with Colorado University of Mines, a um, resource, applied resource science and technology. Oh, we have a full meta effect going to the main of Exalton from Barzad. Oh! How much was that? Not many probes killed, not many SCVs killed right there, and these Widow Mines were able to take out that Mothership Core. And Exalton opting just to get back. There's no reason to really stay there, and honestly, this, this dropship is going to head over there and be able to do a lot of damage. There's no Static D over here. Um, his Colossus tech just went down. This is kind of a fragile period for a Protoss when he tries to do a first sort of all-in or just kind of cheesy play and doesn't focus on macro. We, and ends up getting into a place where he has to transition to tech, but he needs to get more economy up. And this is definitely just a fragile point. We have Barhazad moving out onto the map, clearing out that pylon, and also a stalker. Oh my gosh! Here we go, let's see that afterburner! And Barhazad drops on the main base. Widow Mine instantly burrows. How many will it get off with the shot? Uh, hurts some of the Marines, maybe gets one or two. And that Widow Mine's going to be really annoying. We're going to have to see an Observer out from our friend, um, Exultant. Barzad just putting on a little bit of pressure. Not so bad. And there it is. It does clean up that, um, that Widow Mine. We have one attack done for Barzad, and his army is moving out. No upgrades. Yet on our Protoss player, he's trying to get out of Colossus right now. He is supply blocked. Both players heavily supply blocked at the moment. And really, Barzad could just run up right now. I don't see why, why he should be waiting. He's not. He's going to move right in. He's getting concussive shells. His plus one armor is being researched. He's getting that third command center. He is in such a great position. He will be able to effectively destroy this Protoss player.
Barzog creeping up. And here's the stem up the ramp. Where's the stem? Up the ramp. Decent force fields. Not so good. He'll be able to take out this entire army. Oh, medevacking up the other units to get him in the base. He doesn't care. He knows he can just crush this. Three medevacs on the scene. That's pretty much enough to, dis for, to support this much bio. Pulls the probes. Desperation. And we will see the GG here from our friend Exultant. GG from Exalton and Barhazad takes this set two out of University of New Mexico CSL versus Colorado University of Mines. And now we're going to jump into the 2v2 match between Cat Whale and Dr. Ted and Wooterface versus BDM. Woo Watch solo. Isle of Slaughter is a. 2v2 map, it's a very nice 2v2 map for macro games. It's very hard to do um, cheese on this map, like really early aggression, because it's a really long way to reinforce. I mean, if it's Protoss versus whatever, and they have pylons, I mean, that's a different story. But in general, this is um, a very good macro map. All the players giving uh, GLs and HFs to each other. It's very cute. And on this particular map, or let's see this too. So we have ZVT, which is um, by far the most powerful 2v2 um, race composition that you can get. Uh, in my 2v2 with my Terran friend, we do uh, Hellions and Lings to start opening, which is really impossible to stop unless there's a really good wall off. And I don't know, for whatever reason, we screw up and there's tanks out early or something that can you know, get us away. And uh, UNM, they have a PVZ. Which can be good too. Uh, stalkers and lings are really a really good opening. Like if you want to put on the pressure, um, or you you know the Zerg player focuses on getting a lot of lings and map control, and the Protoss player um, macros up and finds some kind of type, some kind of timing, like a DT drop or something somewhat crazy. That's what I like about Protoss. They can still be really dirty, and Zerg can just be early uh, kind of like a lot of early lings too. Um, just get map control and scout and such. We do have... Oh god, we have a, a speedling uh, a speedling opening from our Zerg player on Colorado University of Mines. And it looks like we're going to have a, a Reaper opening. Or Marauders. It looks like Reaper. From our Terran player. And we had um, Dr. Ted, Zerg player for UNM, going hatch first. And getting gas, not having a pool yet, now getting the pool down. Oh, this, this, I mean, I don't know, this map is kind of bad for it, because they, a player must go in this, come out of their base, and run around this sort of S pattern along the map. And Catwheel, we're definitely seeing just a standard uh, a gateway cyber opening, into some sort of tech, some sort of early tech. He's, he has four on gas right now. Um, the first lings are out, and... Speed is researching. This is very scary for UNM. Colorado School of Mines is really going to put on this early, early kind of cheesy pressure. And we are seeing that first Reaper come out from our friend Wooterface. Oh, and Cat Whale just saw that. He saw all those lings, and it's super early for those lings. 345 would have that many lings and a gas. I don't, know, I don't necessarily know if he saw it. This is going to be really hard to hold on to. Is Dr. Ted, he's making a queen. And Ling, so he's, he's it looks like he's, and he's getting speed rather quickly too, so he'll, the, I don't know, this is going to be really close. So we have a lot of Lings in production right now, and a lot of Lings trailing across the map. And we have a Reaper coming up, so this could be really annoying. The Reaper could stay out of Mineral Line and just hit, hit, hit away, while these Lings are just going to be the constant, you know, pressure. We do have one Stalker out from Cat Whale. We're going to see how this really plays out right now. This is going to be pretty scary. Speed just finished for our uh, Colorado S University of Mines player. And the Lings are going to be, be able to take out Cat Whales. Oh my gosh, this is incredible early pressure from the Colorado University of Mines. And they're going to take out Cat Whales' Stalker. We do have another Stalker on its way out. We do have... Oh, and the Lings are in. Going to take out this Pylon. Luckily, it's not an Artosis Pylon. We have a good amount of Purple Lings out, but they're speedless. And speed is nearly about to finish. Microwing the Reapers around is Wooterface. Oh, we're going to see this other one go down. Um... 
two stalkers out pulling probes right now from Catwhale. We have enough lings in here to really take out this queen from Dr. Ted. Will it? And it goes down. We do have a few lings taking a, a bunch of red lings around outside to stop reinforcements as well as inside to try to snipe these buildings. But there's enough lings coming out to keep them busy. And Catwhale is taking out lings one by one, not losing his stalkers. And the, the red stalkers are leaving while these... Oh! So Wooderface not opting to get into mineral lines with those with the, with those stalkers. And they're caught right now! Or at least there's enough lings right now for Dr. Ted to stop this aggression. And we have enough stalkers out to stop it as well. You, Colorado University of Mines is trying to take out this this natural hatchery. Really, they don't have enough bottle. Uh, enough, they don't have enough. They didn't save enough units. They're just losing them. They're not bottling up or snowballing into a positive position. They're just losing them back and forth. We have more lings streaming across the map, but they're all going to get. They're all going away from the base. I think effectively, University of New Mexico has held it and beat your meat. The Zerg player from Colorado University of Mines has said the map is too big for this early cheese. And, and wow. Honestly, University of New Mexico in a empowering position. Such an empowering position. There is a lot of red links here, but there's too many stalkers here, as well as uh, purple links from Dr. Ted. And let's see what's happening back at the base. I think this is effectively um, taken care of. Our red Zerg player is on no money and doesn't have his rally point. Oh, there he goes. That's his rally point set. We had, uh, whoa. So we had two gases going the entire time from our, our pink our pink protest player Wooterface on Colorado uh, University of Mines. It, only six. Oh gosh, he has two command centers and what else is he making? Five more racks. This is kind of a, not a very typical build here and. The aggression is still kind of going on down here, but it's basically ended. I mean, Vin, uh, Dr. Ted can, is now droning. He's making seven drones. He's not scared. We have uh, Catwheel putting on most of his next tech. His natural is saturated. He's gonna. He has his... Uh, I mean, his main is saturated. His natural is down. He is in such a commanding position. So we'll see what these two players decide to do. They could just do some sort of timing with a bunch of units and probably win. We do have uh, Beat Your Meat... Getting more, getting more drones, kind of macking up. He has map control right now, effectively. I mean, really, uh, Dr. Ted and Catwhale from University of New Mexico aren't really concerned at this moment with any more aggression. They have a hold on their map. They have a hold on this map right now, their map area, and uh, we have a bailing that's coming down from Dr. Ted, and they're just going to macro up. I'm uh, very happy to see that they were able to stop that, but again, it was ill-advised doing that kind of cheese on this map. And really, I, I don't think the... Uh, the Terran player did a really good opening right there. He could have just got quick factory and, you know, really g g got Hellions out and just crushed. Basically kept Lings alive and then had those Hellions and would have crushed uh, Catwhale and Dr. Ted. Seven drones coming down from BU Meat. And getting an Evolution Chamber. I think that was ill-advised. He really doesn't have the money for that right now. Or the gas, for that matter. Oh, no, he, he was able to get it. And getting that that bangling nest. Well, I guess he has enough to stop. Oh, uh, we have this queen. Will it be able to take out this? Yes, it will. That's a sad overlord. Squish! We are seeing the vital upgrades coming in from our Terran player. Concussive shells. Uh, plus one armor, plus one... Uh, plus one armor, plus one uh, attack, combat shields. We just saw concussive shells finish. He does have a number of marauders right here, maybe expecting some kind of bangling play or uh, more stalkers in general. It's a good counter for that. However, Catwhale is is getting Colossus as Colossus tech, getting an immortal out right now and going to focus on Colossus tech after that and then do some kind of two base, two base pressure with Colossus and probably Zerg Zerglings and Banglings. We do have the Spire coming down from Dr. Ted. Effectively way ahead. Uh, effectively just way ahead of Beat Your Meat. Scouting Reapers coming across. We'll confirm that Cat Whale has taken his expansion. It is nearly saturated and oh my gosh, clutch. Um, we do have... Um, 
armor upgrade coming in from Cat Whale. So we will have uh, a well upgraded timing with Colossus. Not enough bio here to really do anything. He's spending quite well, but really he's not saturated in his main. His naturals needs more work as well, and he's concentrated on making units and not making SCVs, which is quite poor. The first five mutas are on their way out. As well as plus one carapace, bangling speed, and we're seeing uh, basically the same thing coming out of uh, Beecher Meat. Again, University of New Mexico in a really commanding position right now against Colorado University of Mines in Golden, Colorado. Catwheel's Observer can see everything that Wooterface is doing. Oh, and we are seeing the University of New Mexico team break down their rocks. They're going to make a push forward. And this is absolutely a great time to do it. Let's see what the unit count is. We have uh, 45, 55, uh, 28, 61. Uh, more army value from U University of New Mexico, for sure. We are seeing them move across the map, and they will be working on the rocks of their opponent. Really, all that... Colorado University of Mines has is some banglings, a, a group of um, zerglings, and some bio, and one or two tanks. So Dr. Ted opting to use his mutas to destroy anything that's kind of like out of position around this general area and be able to see where both armies are at one time. Maybe even get this Terran army over to the um, this left side of the map. Oh, and Dr. Ted did catch this third going down and has got the cancel on it. He's um, massing banglings and zerglings and we have Catwhale which just is just sitting, sitting pretty with his Immortals, Colossus, and just warped in more sentries than Zealots. Playing really well and really an advantage right now because Dr. Ted has just taken his third expansion, so he will be able to get that up while this this is going on. The Observer goes down. The Lings are getting them out of positions, and we are seeing these Colossus move into this natural expansion of Beecher Meat right now, and he's taking out these drones really well. There's nothing really to contest it. There are three Corruptors, but really there's enough Stalkers here to just snipe those, snipe those, and guess what? The Colossus are moved back but just for a second. This Queen's going to go down. Most of the army moving over to try to stop this. Are we, is, we can't have them moving? Are they going to move in? Yeah. Alright, so everyone's moving in right now. Here is the engage. We have Zerglings and Banglings meeting in the middle. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a, basically a trade. Oh my gosh, almost a complete trade. We have this powerful Protoss army taking out the natural Beecher Meat. And we don't have much bio here as well as this tank going straight down. Only three Corruptors on the map right now. Won't be able to effectively take out these Colossus fast enough to stop them. And this bio is just crumbling. We do have some... We have a bunch of 28 circlings coming out, but I think they're going to come out one by one, and Catwheel will be able to stop them. This uh, Protoss army is not being destroyed right now. Oh, this AoE damage from this Colossus basically did it. Um, wow, and we have a crap load of Lings just rushing in from, from Dr. Ted. And really, that's it. University of New Mexico has taken this 2v2. There's really nothing either player can do. The production facilities are flooded of Uterface. Colorado University of Mines opting for a really cheesy opening, doing a 10-pull speed lane all-in with two Reapers, <laughs> and it just didn't work out. They, um, University of New Mexico was able to fight it off and macro a little bit harder and take this game. We do have a Roach Warren coming up, but I don't see why. And the GG, will it be coming anytime soon? Yeah, Beat Your Meat has GG'd and has left the game. Is there anything over here that's happening? No, he's got Vikings, but it's just not enough. And Wooderface has left the game, and UNM CSL takes this game. So uh, currently in this cast of University of New Mexico versus Colorado School of Mines, we have UNM CSL up two, or up one, out of this best of kind of five, because there's an ace match in case it gets there. 
So F10, quit replay. And from what I understand, um, there was a disqualification regarding that. Uh, Colorado School of Mines did not put up their um, their player listing until I think yes, uh, the day before this match or days before the match, which has disqualified their ace match uh, because it's to be d determined out of a, uh, some sort of list. I'm not exactly sure how that goes. CSL, a great thing, is still somewhat confusing to me. And now we will go to the last game. Um, it, ev it either will get evened up or UNM CSL can't, will take it. So we will do set three. Is that it? Yeah, Solar GTO versus Toxic. Twinkle, or is it Twinkie? Yeah, Toxic Twinkie. Oh, so fun. What am I downloading? This is a weird Polar Night if I had to download it. So we are on Polar Night LE, which is a part of the map pool at this present time. In the top left-hand corner, we have that red Protoss. He is the leader of the UNM CSL team. His name is Solar JTO. And in the bottom... Uh... The box, I hope I didn't say corner in the last one, but in the direct bottom, the green Protoss player's name is Toxic Twinkie. I don't know much about to Toxic Twinkie, but he is a part of the Colorado University of Mines in Golden, Colorado, a um, resource technology school. It sounded really interesting when I was reading about it. They're a very forward... Uh, whoa. Toxic Twinkie. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm so glad I'm catching this, so there's embarrassment at one point. I hope he gets made fun of for that. <laughs> um, it was a really interesting school. Very forward-thinking, uh, uh, resource technology and applied sciences in that direction, which is very, very interesting. So, um, never heard of it before. Very cool. University of New Mexico, uh, just a, a regular state school. Very, very in what it does. I think mostly it's, it's known for its healthcare, education, and science. Um, a lot of engineering, physics, applied math, and pure math. And I think, but I think um, Solar JTO is a communications major. And this is PvP, ladies and gentlemen. So anything can happen if it gets far enough. Well, all I know is it's stalkers and immortals mostly. We'll see their gas timings. We do have gateway opening from Solar JTO and a single gas. We're seeing nearly the same thing, except his. Um, Toxic Twinkie has not put down his, uh, his, there it goes, he has his gas timing right now, so we'll see what he really opts to do, he got a few more minerals, more than Solar JTO did after his gas, but we are seeing double gas from Solar JTO. And again, this is Division A of both teams. Definitely see how they will go, second pylon is being placed into the map of Toxic Twinkie. And also with our Protoss Solar JTO. Cybercore coming down for both players. Pretty much identical builds at the moment. One player opting to get more gas. Going to see what tech he decides to go into in just a moment. PvP is just such a, such a coin flip at times. Like you could, in theory on paper, do things a lot better than your opponent, but still lose. Or at least that's what I get out of it. But again, I'm a gold Zerg player. What do I know? We do have uh, Solar JTO's pesky probe here in this um, optional third location of Toxic Twinkie. We do have Toxic Twinkie coming in with his probe for a cool scout. And he will see... Yeah, two gateways. And hurry up and getting that, that warp gate out. That's really important. We aren't seeing the warp gate on uh, Toxic Twinkie being chronoed at all. And Toxic Twinkie is just checking out, just seeing that, that second gateway. This is a standard PvP opening from Solar JTO. Being able to get some units out to stop. Um, be ready for some sort of gate aggression. We do have Twilight Council coming down from Toxic Twinkie. So he will either be going uh, a Blink Stalker route or a DT route. Most likely Blink Stalker. It's very strong. And we are seeing a Stargate coming out of Solar JTO. Um, maybe Oracles, maybe Void Rays, not necessarily sure. Probably an Oracle, so he can scout, and amongst other things. Worker counts are pretty even. No kills just yet, no first blood. And we still have Solar JTO's um, forward probe here to maybe put down a forward pylon. Or maybe just a scout again. Two more gateways coming in, so this is going to be some, some type of aggression. Some Blink Stalker aggression. 
chronoing out a, a sentry as Toxic Twinkie. Stargate nearly up from Solar JTO. Getting out more Stalkers. And the first unit of choice out of that Stargate is... Is... An Oracle. And... Yes. For scouting, and he's cronying it out right now. We do see a pylon by that optional third location from Solar JTO on, on uh, Toxic Twinkie's side of the map. And his probe is now just sitting kind of uh, by the ramp, just kind of hidden. And we do have Solar JTO moving out with four stalkers. Going to take some map control, some presence. We do have this probe from T Toxic Twinkie that will be able to see it. Well, not really. Excuse me, not being able to see that, I think, at all. He will see this oracle, though, come across. What else do we have? We do have a Dark Shrine down from Toxic Twinkie. And Zealot Legs being researched. And Warp Gate for him is nearly finished. He does have a Forge down. Oh, Sentry uh, put down that Clutch Force Field, stopping Solar GTO from coming into the base. Do we have a Robo going down? Oh, he does have a Oracle, so that will work also as detection. Oh, but we do have a Ford Pylon from Toxic Twinkie. Two of them. And we do have a DT that is warped in and moving toward. But now that he sees it. Uh, Solar J2, did you see the Dark Shrine? And I think he's moving back. He's moving out of there and he's moving his Oracle back to his base. This is a really bad position. Really bad position right now for Solar JTO. Does he get in the other Oracle out? Yes, he needs to really quickly. He's losing probes. He's moving probes out of there. And they one hit probes. One, DT's one hit probes. Oh gosh. Is there enough energy for it? Is there enough energy for this? No, there's not enough energy in this particular oracle, but the other oracle coming out will be able to stop it. And we do have Revelation put on right now. Good play from Toxic Twinkie, being able to outmeta his his opponent. Um, getting that DT Shrine down and taking out a few probes. Um, whoa, 10 probes! That's, that's a lot. That was 10 probes. So good, definitely good for him. Uh, Probe count 25 to 16. Uh, we are seeing Toxic Twinkie go for the, like this uh, uh, aggression here with a, with an Archon Zealots with Zealot Leg with the Zealot Leg upgrade. And will his plus one be going or anything? No, he got a Forge, but d opted not to use it. His Warp Gate is up, and uh, another Forward Pylon is up. Uh, two Oracles, a lot of Stalkers versus this. I don't think it's going to work out. And with that Sentry count as well. Toxic Twinkie being able, trying to move into that choke, but oh, JTO canceling those pylons. Pulling probes right now. Getting back in an area where he can just, you know, use his range. He's losing one stalker to a bunch of zealots. Um, his oracles are on trying to work on that. Oh, but killing that Archon. But there's just too, too many gateway units here and lost too many probes already. Solar GTO will probably have to GG here in just a moment. Just great execution. Wow. Uh, Toxic Twiggy taking that game. So we did have the UNM CSL team up to, uh, at, uh, with two victories. And we do have the uh, Colorado University of Mines at two victories also. But we have it going to University of New Mexico due to disqualification of, n of the Colorado School of Mines not being able to put their player list up in time. So um, GG's from both players and really great play.